Hi, my name is Winslet and welcome to my Amazon Doctrine tier list. Last week I posted my complete Doctrine tier list, which looks like this. And today I'm going to be talking about why I placed each Amazon Doctrine where I did. While I expect that future expansions and patches will change how good some of the Doctrines are and add a few others, the Doctrines kept the values they had at launch at the launch of the game up until the Tyrannosaurus patch, so about nine months. Um, so I expect these numbers to stay the same for a while, and even if they do change, I think these tier lists will remain somewhat useful, especially to new players who just kind of want to know generally what's a, a good idea and what's not a good idea. There are 97 doctrines that I could find in the game and while I'd love to talk about them all in one video I decided to break them all into more smaller digestible segments like this one. Okay so the first doctrine we're going to look at is ecological construction which is in the S tier. It's one of my favorite doctrines because it really plays into what the Amazon are supposed to do. The Amazon are supposed to like wildlife and trees and, and growing as many trees as possible and, and living in those environments, um, which ecological construction definitely does. To look at those values, we're just going to hop on over to our, um, our game like this and look up ecological construction in our imperial archives. So you can see here that you get plus 10 production for every forest sector within your domain. I believe you always start with a forest sector in your capital, so you'll get 10 production for that. And if you expand into all of the forests around you, you'll get a lot of extra production, which you can use to either build buildings or units. It's useful in the early game and the late game. While it is slightly more useful in the early game to have a lot of high production, it is um, it is valuable even in the late game to be able to just pump out those higher tier units a little bit quicker. If you're doing a, like a smaller unit um, strategy, you may not need as much production, but it, still the more production you have, the more units you can make, or rather the more quickly you can make your units, because it really depends on how much energy you're making. Um, the, the amount of units that you can support depends on the amount of uh, energy that you're making. Now let's just hop on back to this image to see where it is in relation to other things. It's my second favorite doctrine. There's only one that I consider better than it, Noble Diplomats. And um, then I think it's Worker Integration off to the right. Let's just hop back on over to the game to look up Noble Diplomats and Worker Integration. Noble Diplomats. Yeah, Noble Diplomats just gives you a lot of influence and energy for every faction you're uh, at peace at. The more friendly you are, the more resources you get. I find that very, very useful. If you're, you're playing nice, even if you're not playing nice, you can get some energy out of it and um, that'll help you support more units. So very, very good at all phases of the game. And uh, yeah, you know, just slightly better than ecological construction. I mean, you could argue it's a lot better, but I think both of them synergize really, really well with certain strategies. Now let's just check worker integration, which I think is, yeah, that one right there that was to the right of our um, ecological construction. So this gives you extra production and energy slots. Or no, it doesn't give you extra slots. It makes it so that people who are put in the production or energy slots make plus two more of the resource. So if you're going to make five production with a worker um, and the, the production in the production area, then it all of a sudden becomes seven. If it was going to make eight, that would become ten. If you were going to make six energy, all of a sudden that would become eight. So that adds up pretty quickly. I would say that it gives you a bigger benefit in the late game because you'll have more workers in the late game, but every little bit helps in the beginning of the game. Every little bit of energy that you can get your hands on really, really helps. That extra production, maybe not so much in the early game. Um, so yeah, slightly, slightly worse than 
the production that you'd get out of ecological construction. It just is easier to get a lot of production. Um, so it goes ahead of them in the tier list. So now we can bring this guy back up and the next one on our list is advanced wildlife militarization. It's in the A tier. That's still pretty good. Not quite as good as the S tier. I mean S tier you kind of like you, you have to take that pretty much every game. A is, yeah, you, you probably want that once you got it, but maybe it doesn't work as well as other doctrines. Um, let's go see what the description is for advanced. Actually, wait, wildlife will bring this up faster, won't it? Yeah, there we go. We found it. So this will give your animal and mounted units more morale a little bit more HP and they'll gain experience a lot faster. That extra experience gain is really really good for animals who are going to evolve when they get to prime rank because you'll get there not twice as quickly but considerably quicker. And uh, yeah I think just having more health on your units is always nice. Having extra morale will mean that they can do more critical hits and do more damage. Um, I really do think though that the the biggest benefit you get out of this is that XP gain for your animal units. I mean, mounted units typically are, are fairly strong anyways, and giving your pteranodons an extra 10 HP sounds nice. Having them do like critical hits sounds also very, very nice. But, you know, it's, it's still not quite as good as that raw production. Um, that you get from ecological construction. I know I'm, I'm going to get comments saying, no, 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 this is much better than that. Um, I can understand why you'd think that, but let's say you're not going for the animal or mounted unit strategy. Maybe there's something else that you're going to try and do as Amazon. I know it's strange not going animal and mounted as Amazon. Um, I don't know. I think that the other one is just a little bit more adaptable, and this is a little bit easier to counter. Okay, so what did we have on the left and right of that? We had, it's in this A tier somewhere. It's near the bottom. We have a Kirka thing to the left and a assembly thing off to the right. I think that's planetary swarm. So we're gonna search that next. Where are you? There you are. Yeah, I found you. It makes it so that your units are a little bit cheaper, and in addition, all of them are cheaper to um, produce. They, they don't cost as much to, to um, upkeep, so, you know, that means that you can have just a lot of little units across the map. I mean, it makes sense. It's planetary swarming. You can swarm with those tiny little units. It's It's a pretty good one. I, I know I really like the other one, but I think this is just slightly better in terms of potential. I haven't tested it, but it just, like looking at those numbers, it feels better. Um, then we had a, a blue one, which was, I think is autopsies. What does it look like again? Yeah, that looks like the autopsies one. There it is. So this will give you extra research per kill. That adds up pretty pretty quickly. Um, I'm sure at a certain point you probably want to drop that and get a different doctrine, but I find that pretty valuable in the early game. I'll let you get some nice technologies and allow you to, to get some good spells going and, and some good units out in the field a little bit quicker. Um, but yeah, I think that HP and experience gain that you get on your animals will allow your armies to just be a little bit stronger than the um, bonuses that you get for extra research. I mean, there's this doesn't apply directly to any units. Nothing here really applies directly to your units, so it'll take more time for this to actually pay off. Getting this early is better than later. Okay, so what's next in our list of Amazon doctrines? We have progressive cultivation. And what does that do again? That one, I think, is a nice one. I mean, it's relatively high up on the list. Should be nice. Ah, it gives you extra food um, in all of your colonies and a little bit extra food for every Arcadian sector that you have around you. That's like 
This is a fungal ruins, not Arcadian. One of these has to be Arcadian. Yeah. Then none of you are Arcadian. Well, yeah, this would be not a great map for taking that then. Yeah, I don't see any Arcadian stuff around me, so it's like <laughs> if you got a, a map like this, you don't really want to go for um, progressive cultivation. Now, what do we have around progressive cultivation? I think we have other things that affect your economy a little bit. So, I uh, just had to make a quick edit here. I actually got a little bit mixed up on what doctrines I needed to talk about. I started talking about colony militia and comparing it to progressive cultivation, and that's not what you have next to um, progressive cultivation. You have frontier survival to the left of it and um, verdant growth to the right. Right? Am I getting that wrong? Let's pull this up again. And... Yeah, we have Frontier Survival, the tent to the left of it, and Vernant Growth off to the right. So let's just pull up um, Frontier Survival really quickly, compare that to um, those other two doctrines. This will give you plus 15 food for 50 energy. It's affordable, plus 15 food is really easy to, um, to get a lot out of. You don't have to have a certain sector exploitation to get like half of that food um, and you know that's I think better than some of the other options that affect your economy like this. Um, yeah that's just pull up progressive cultivation because I think that one was one of the other ones that works differently. Yeah so this one you need to you get eight um, without anything extra kind of like what we were just talking about it only costs uh 50 energy um so they're, they're pretty comparable this one will give you slightly more if you have an arcadian sector connected uh but if you have more than one you'll get a lot more i think it's easier to just deal with the plus 15 than to try and get a lot out of this i mean i you could argue that this is better than frontier survival but i think um Getting that food earlier is better because that will help you get more workers a little bit quicker. And after a certain point, food becomes a lot less useful. And uh, that's going to be when you have lots of sectors and maybe can just have lots of Arcadian things connected up to what you're working on. Now, Vernon Growth. I think this one is slightly more expensive. Yeah, it's 100 energy compared to the 50 for the other ones. Now, instead of just getting 15 in the center, every food sector will give you plus 15. You do have to have food sectors developed to get anything out of that. Um, so it's the hardest one out of those three to actually develop. Um, like If you just grab an Arcadian thing, yeah, that's now you get extra food for progressive cultivation. Um, but no, you actually have to have a food sector developed to get that plus 15 for Vernigra, so yeah, keep that in mind. Now we can look at our next doctrine, which was Arboreal Habitation. Let's look that one up now. I don't think I'm getting ahead of myself, right? Yeah, we've talked about everything here. We can now hop on over to... Um, Arboreal Habitation. So what does that one do? Boreal habitation. Apparently I can't spell. How do you spell that one? <laughs> I had it in front of me a second ago. It was, I thought I just spelled it like that, arboreal. And there we go. So uh, it's not arboreal habitation, it's arboreal Eden. I'm going to have to fix my, my image after this. Whoops. I knew there was something I missed. So um, arboreal Eden, it now gives you uh, six happiness for every far sector that's on a colony. That will allow you to get your happiness events a little bit quicker. The far sectors um, also allow your guys to move quickly through them a little bit more quickly. That will allow you to just kind of like use less units to defend more territory. Very nice strategy in the late game when you can just move everybody into one area and then kind of do a doom stack. Your units gain an additional 200 morale when fighting within for us. So on top of what they usually get, they're going to get 
even more morale, allowing him to just basically always get critical hits. And you know you can always turn a sector into a far sector right before you attack to get that benefit. Now, what do we have around Arboreal Eden? We have um, we have a Kirko thing and an Empire Quest. Let's look at the Empire Quest first. It looks like something bouncing off of his shield, right? It's kind of hard for me to see from here, so let's just check to see which one that one is. That one is Invader. What does Invader do? Invader gives you extra 400 morale against all independents. That will allow you to get a lot more critical hits against those units, but if you're fighting a commander, it's useless. So I'd say that's quite nice in the early game, but it has um, diminishing returns. It, they're, they're not quite as good as you, as you move through the game. Now, I think we can talk about the uh, Kirko one. Um, which I consider slightly better than Arboreal Eden. And this one is called Dream Sharing. So this allows your Kirko to get more experience out of combat. That means that um, if you have any like emergence, they'll get up to prime rank faster and turn into better units a lot quicker. And if not, you'll just get your other units to prime rank and they'll get their benefits a little bit quicker. And uh, basically with the way the Kirko are supposed to pump out those units and and swarm over the map that, that that is really really good especially in just increasing your combat efficiency if you're going to have sectors that um give you experience uh, before your units are have done any combat if they start at like rank two or three this definitely is not a great option but i think it's a good option for the kirko if you're just trying to grab a lot of stuff um and that's why it's slightly better than Arboreal Eden. I know you could definitely make the argument that Arboreal Eden's better than this one, but yeah, Kirko like like experience. I think all Kirko units applies to commanders as well, so you can get your commanders to those really nice Kirko um, things a little tiny bit quicker. Now, what do we have next? We have. Uh, I keep seeing Arboreal Habitation. It's gonna drive me crazy. I thought I caught this stuff. Ecological Warfare. Oh, I know that one. That one's quite a nice one. It's uh, it's okay in certain situations, but I think you can find a way to make it work in your benefit. That's why it's got the Better with Synergy icon there. Um, so let's go find Ecological Warfare. And this one will make it so that your non-mechanical units heal a little bit um, extra on the map. That's okay. And it will make it so that your melee units can apply poison, which does damage over time and reduces the morale of the enemy. If you're going to be trying to reduce the morale of the enemy, this can help you do that um, a lot quicker because you're probably going to have a lot of melee and biological attacks uh, as the Amazon. Um, maybe not so much melee until the late game and then you'll have a couple more, but you'll have tons of biological attacks that can throw poison on people. I saw the developer, I think his name's Tom Bird, was pairing this with sign number to get some very nice effects. You can, yeah, synergize well with those two things together to do lots and lots of damage to your enemy. I think if they've got low morale, you do extra damage as side number, or you can make it that way. Now, what do we have around ecological warfare? We have planetary something and an assembly thing. So let's go find the planetary something first. Use planetary conquest. Yeah, it gives you extra popular support, which in turn will allow you to get more morale and I think happiness events and some other something else. There's a third thing I'm forgetting. Gives you extra morale so your, your units can get more crits. Yeah, you get more happiness, therefore happiness events happen more often and your units will cost less, so you'll be able to have more um, units on the map 
before you run a negative upkeep, which is kind of like, yeah, really bad once you get to that point. Or it's not terrible, but you don't really want to have too negative, too much uh, energy going out per turn, unless you can like maybe generate it in one of your cities the next turn. Um, so yeah, we've talked about why I like Planetary Conquest. It's that popular support is, is applicable to a lot of different situations. And then what was on the right of that again? It was a, it looked like an assembly doctrine. I think it's connected society. Let's try that, see if that looks like the right thing. Yeah, that's it. So this will give you a little bit more influence per colonist at the cost of happiness. For happiness is really not a big deal. You can counteract that very easily. And um, yeah, if you've got like, tw you know, 15 or so colonists, you're going to be getting 15 research there for uh, for happiness. There's there's a lot of better doctrines out there, like the ones that give you just plus 15 food for nothing bad. But um, after a certain point, this is beneficial, is quite beneficial to you. Uh, but it's not the best in the world. That's why it's so far down on our list. Okay, so. Next thing in our list is Bio Crusade, which is a nice one if you get the right situation. So, Bio Crusade, what does that do? Bio Crusade is this one. Gives you plus 20% damage when fighting mechanical and cyborg units. That's what the cross, uh, the swords mean. The swords are saying that if you're fighting against a certain opponent, you're going to do extra damage. That opponent in this situation is mechanical and cyborg units. If you're not fighting that, then that's not going to apply, and this doctrine is almost useless. They added your mounted and animal units with melee attacks get frenzy in the, the last patch, the Tyrannosaurus uh, patch. So, um, you do get something out of it if you're not fighting mechanical and cyborg units. Um, and if you want to go for a melee heavy focus, then you got a nice doctrine here, which can give the Amazon the ability to do that. A lot of their units um, are ranged. They don't have melee attacks. So maybe you chose a secret tech that does go melee, but you, you know, you need something extra to make your melee better. I think Void Tech has some nice melee options for Amazon, so you could use this to make that better. All right, so what's around Bio Crusade? We got Colony Militia, which is actually quite nice if you are trying to make lots and lots of units. It will reduce the production of those units by 10% at least 10% and then a little bit more for every uh, level of colony militia or you know your your infrastructure your defenses and your cities um, and you can't reduce that more than 75% so if you have other things that are reducing that cost this has a pretty easy, easy threshold to reach so it's arguably not super valuable but i think you could make the argument that it is better than the doctrines that are better against certain opponents this just seems more widely applicable it seems like it's easier to get some value out of it but you'll get more value out of the things that um, impact how much damage you do if you are planning accordingly if you're being strategic about what you make and, and where you make it uh yeah Bio Crusade is slightly better than uh, I think that's a Kirko doctrine. Is that active retribution? Let's look up active retribution. Yeah, you just get extra damage against all non Kirko units. Um, it's easy to apply that, but it's only plus 10% and nothing extra comes with it. So, yeah, definitely worse than Bio Crusade. That's all I wanted to say about the Amazon doctrines. If you've got any comments, make sure you let me know in the comments down below. I'll see you around. Have a good one.